Hi folks, welcome to the first ever episode of Behind the Curtain, Morristown's one and only podcast for local theater news and updates. I'm your host, James Bernoski. Twice a month we'll be bringing you special behind-the-scenes content for upcoming plays as well as cast interviews and insights into the creative process that brings these stories to life on the stage. We're just getting started, so stick with us. Alright, that's pretty much it. On with the show. glad to be with you we're going to get right into it here with greetings i'm not saying hi to you that's that's the name of a play greetings by tom dudzik is opening november 17th at 8 p.m at the rose center and running through that weekend and the next but auditions are now open this play is directed by me, so if you want me to tell you what to do for a while, you can come on down to the Rose Center's Classroom 4 between 6 and 9 p.m., August the 29th and 30th. I can't wait to see you there. Also, the Morristown Theatre Guild's 9th Annual 24-Hour Film Contest is coming up. Contestants will meet at the Capitol Theatre in Greenville at noon on September the 9th. They will receive a specific prop, line of dialogue, and shooting locations, and will have 24 hours to write, direct, shoot, and edit an original short film. Films will be turned in back at the Capitol on the 10th between 11 and 12. I seriously cannot encourage you all enough to join this thing. Um, I've been making short films for about nine years now, and the film festival was what started it. So, if you're thinking about getting into acting, getting into directing, getting into making films, camera work, any of that type of stuff, absolutely join us. You'll, you'll have a great time. You'll have an experience, if nothing else. Finally, let's go ahead and talk about Dial M for Murder. Well, I don't have to talk about it because I've got an interview here with the director. So, let's go ahead and cut to that now. All right, uh, glad to be here with Jeff Spencer. Uh, who's directing the upcoming show Dial In for Murder. How are you doing today? Doing well. How about yourself, James? I'm doing great. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about Dial In. Tell us about that. Tell us what it's about, you know, what happens in it without giving away too much. Okay. Just give the audience a little bit, you know, of what they can expect to, to uh, look forward to. Well, we're, we're very excited about Dial In for Murder. We're uh, well into our rehearsal process. We've got a phenomenal cast for this show. Uh, the playwright is Frederick Knott. Dial M dates back to, I think, 51, 1951, and uh, was adapted to film by Alfred Hitchcock, 1954, if I'm not mistaken, a very popular film. Um, the general premise, like you say, without, without giving away too much, uh, have a, a couple, uh, the man was a, is a former tennis star, and it's, it's all set in London, and he's you know, played Wimbledon for several years and, and traveled around the world and all that sort of thing. And uh, he's having a bit of uh, matrimonial difficulty, shall we say. And he might be uh, a bit more uh, enamored with his uh, wife's finances than perhaps he is with her in, in reality. So uh, <clears throat> he devises a plan to not be separated from that which he loves, so to speak. And, and uh, things that don't necessarily go exactly as planned, but uh, there's a lot of, of you know, mystery and intrigue throughout the story about uh, what ultimately happens with, with him and, and some of the misdeeds that he has uh, attempted to take, have take place. So he's the hero of the story, right? I guess that depends on your I'm, point of I'm view. on his side already. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I'm fully on his side. There may be a little bit more to it than that. I don't know if uh, the, the story, in, in my estimation, only really has one, uh, one hero who's the inspector that ultimately uh, solves the puzzle. Uh, so you've acted in, in numerous plays over the years, um, but this will, I believe, be your second time directing a play. Right. Um, although you've directed multiple short films in the past. Uh, can you give a little bit of insight as to the differences between those two, uh, those two jobs and, I guess, some of the different challenges between the two of them? Between acting... Between and, acting and, and, and directing, yeah. Well, very different 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I did, as you said, I, I acted in several plays first, and that is, you know, a, a very immersive, I guess, uh, a deep sort of mental engagement that you have with the character. Right. A lot of detail in a very focused area mm-hmm. to you know learn your lines learn all the, the detail around that and bring the character to life within the story for the audience whereas directing is very much uh, a little bit of everything mm-hmm. you know in turn it's it's a, a management style sure of responsibility and but it is it is a very rewarding thing to do you're you know, scheduling as far as rehearsals, you know, the initial auditions and casting and uh, every aspect of the show. And as we get closer, the <clears throat> the set build and being able to create the visual image uh, to get the finished product on the stage for the for the patrons. Uh, it it like I said, the directing encompasses everything. Mm-hmm. There are a, a lot of uh, fun experiences that come along with it, particularly the people that you get to work with, the cast members, crew members, everyone that uh, works to put the show on the stage. Because it's not one person. There's there's no way that, that one individual could handle all of these responsibilities. The director is just sort of the... The, the leader to try to you know organize and, and make sure that all all the bases are covered along with all of the partners that right. you know we're privileged to work with um, acting in an individual role um, at times other other than having to learn a bunch of lines at times may be a little bit more fun experience it's uh, more focused on your own development as an actor and again what you can do uh, to make your individual part of the play, your piece of the puzzle, be the best that it can be, uh, and contribute to that, but the uh, director has the the overall vision to convey. So talking about dial in specifically, um, you know, very known title, classic story. Um, I feel like everyone's you know done some version of dial in. What's been your creative process and your approach for uh, injecting, I guess, or orchestrating it as your own vision? Well, everyone, you know, when when I read the script for any play, uh, I'm going to interpret that, you know, somewhat differently than than you would or anyone. Um, so I have that, you know, the vision in my mind. But obviously, you know, we we present to the audience, you know. Dial in for murder by Frederick Knott. So sure. I don't, I don't ever want to move so far away from the original, uh, the original script that there's you know any difficulty in recognizing what it is. So I guess I'm a traditionalist in in that respect and trying to maintain the integrity of what was originally written. But obviously, I see it my way, and I think that process begins from the start with auditions and who you cast. Sure. Um, the first interview that I had for directing uh, my first show, I was asked what, what's the most important element of, uh, of directing and that the casting. Mm-hmm. When you start out with uh, the right actors, actors that you think fit the, uh, the role, each character, that they have things that are in common with their uh, their personality, then you sort of begin to drive toward the end result that you know reflects. In this case, you know, since I'm directing, how I interpret the story, uh, and you're able to influence that all the way along uh, in every rehearsal. Uh, you know, that's the sort of things that we work through. You know, we're uh, it's not just a matter of a lot of you know memorization. Uh, we talk about the characters right. every day. We talk about you know, now, would would Margot do this? How would she respond to that? And and I give my input about what, how I see it, or you know, what is what is Tony's motivation for this particular scene, and and I'll tell you know the actors what what I'm seeing, 
and, and what I'm looking for from them. But then they always, you know, they're individuals. So you sure. get a flavor from each of their uh, processes and their personalities. And, you know, hopefully when it all comes together at the end, you have a good rep representation of the original story, but still yet something that is unique and represents, um, you know, perhaps my vision, but everyone's input and their you know, creative process in terms of their performance. And, you know, I've already talked to the, the cast and, uh, you know, this is true of any show. You know, when we take the stage, you know, for those uh, six performances, Dial in for Murder is never going to be done any other place at any other time exactly like they'll do it. So even though this is a title and a script that's been around for years, their portrayal of it, our presentation of it, will be unique. Sure. And that's one of the things, you know, that has always been the most satisfying about the entire process. You, you are really, even though we're following a, a, an established script, a pattern, a map, we are still creating something that is new that will only be available, you know, for a short time. So when you were uh, applying to, to direct this season, uh, what drove you to dial in initially? I'm, I've always been drawn to, I guess, more uh, traditional, classic you know, titles. That, that type of, of show appeals to me. Um, I guess there's a little bit of trying to you know, maintain <clears throat> history, keeping, keeping that alive and, and try to... Uh, present to modern day audiences things that they may not have heard of before. That was uh, in the list of shows that were available uh, this season with the Guild. That was the one that, that I recognized the most, number one. It was familiar to me. I've learned uh, as we've been leading up to the show and working through rehearsals and, and doing some of our publicity that not everyone knows that title. Yeah. It's something that isn't necessarily as familiar to everyone as, as I might have thought it would have been. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to do that. And the previous show that I've directed, Rainmaker, dates from a similar time period and uh, kind of the same thing, and, and it went over very well. So I would like to revive those traditional titles. Sure. That's something I enjoy. Hmm. Uh, what got you into theater in the first place? It really somewhat of a whim. I've always been a, a, a big movie buff and, you know, uh, like, you know, that type of entertainment. And um, I was aware of, of the Guild uh, in Morristown. I uh, had uh, met some folks, you know, years ago that I knew were affiliated with it. So I, you know, thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll look into this and uh, happened to see uh, online an advertisement for a, a workshop uh, this has been, I guess, about six years ago now, and uh, talking about you know, the many very interesting things from the acting itself to stage combat and things like that. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll give that a try, and uh, you know, was able to get more involved with the guild there. Turn, you know, came out for auditions uh, shortly after that for the next show, and had a very, <clears throat> very minimal role in in that, but you know, enough to kind of get my feet wet and. Uh, sort of caught the bug for it and really enjoyed the, uh, you know, the opportunity to portray uh, a different character and it sort of, you know, snowballed from there and, and I've had an opportunity to do some, some really fun roles over those years. Do you have any interesting anecdotes, things you'd like to share from your time on set? Oh, um... If I understand anything what, that keeps you up at night any uh, any <laughs> <laughs> um, no we have uh, had a lot of uh, fun experiences we've had some trying experiences um, and the thing that I always walk away with is how uh, the theater family always pulls together you know we've uh, recently like last season uh, we put on the play that goes wrong and and we actually had a few things that that went wrong yeah and uh but you know as they say the show must go on so we had some technical challenges there and uh some challenges with scheduling and things but 
uh, everybody pulled together and I guess that's the thing that I admire. We have uh, folks in the theater guild and some of the, you know, the actors that are in our shows that, you know, they absolutely have that priority. They put the, the show first and, and, you know, doing everything we can to, uh, to entertain the crowd. But, uh, yeah, I, I just have always come away, you know, you, you kind of add to your family every sure. time you, you do a show. Okay, so obviously, you know, a, a lot of people are not scared, but I guess kind of nervous to break into theater, either through acting or directing. Um, a lot of people want to. In fact, people watching this show probably are, are thinking about it more and more. Um, what advice do you have for people who are just starting out? Well, number one, I would say don't don't hesitate. Start by all means. Yeah. If if you have that uh, ambition, that motivation, act on it. Uh, I would recommend probably uh, you know auditioning for roles first. You know, do, approach it from the acting side, and uh, hopefully you know you'll uh, get cast early on. If not, don't give up. Uh, certainly. Uh, carry forward that because that's not necessarily a, a reflection on uh, anyone's talent level just certain shows require certain you know certain types of folks depending on what the characters are um, as far as directing you know once someone has sufficient experience I would say as far as plays are concerned it's yeah if, if you have that type of a maybe organization managerial type if that's more your skill set then mm -hmm. directing is going to be something that you probably enjoy and, and be successful doing um, but you know other things besides plays you mentioned short films earlier uh, that's the sort of thing that even from a directing standpoint you can jump into sure. right away you don't have to have a lot of a lot of resources or you know it's just really an expression of your cre creativity yeah and you know folks that do that you know you are directing uh the short film i mean that's really you know the first thing that i directed was short films that i had entered in in the the film contest uh, but the main thing is to you know if, if you have that ambition to definitely move forward with it um I know if folks that are that are local here, the the theater guild is obviously always uh, looking for for new faces and uh, folks that we can uh, help bring into our theater family in whatever role you know they may be you know trying to achieve. Yeah, and and you know that was that was my experience too. I'll say that was um, you know for years I didn't act in anything and. Uh, then of course you invited me to audition for Rainmaker, mm -hmm. so thank you for that. Um, and it really was just a matter of just getting over it and doing it, you know. So right, and that worked out very well. Eh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So dial in. Uh, when and where can people come see it? We will be at uh, Rose Center's Prater Hall. Uh, opening is September 29th. That's a Friday night. The shows are uh, Friday night and Saturday night at 8, and then 2 p.m. matinees on Sundays. We play two weekends, so September 29th, 30th, and October 1st, and then October 6, 7, and 8 will be the second weekend. All righty. Well, um, write that down then. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, certainly. Thanks so much Thank for being so on much. the first episode. I appreciate it. All righty.